morning and welcome to our thought for the day. I'd like to read you a verse this morning from Isaiah chapter 6 and it's verse 1. It says this, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. The little heading I've given to my thought this morning is this, a vision that makes a difference. A vision that makes a difference. There are many men in our world that have visions and they come to nothing. But this was a vision that made a difference. Have you ever experienced something in your life that has truly made a difference? You see, Isaiah says, and I repeat it to you, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. This experience made such an impact upon Isaiah, Isaiah that he even records the date of which it happened. He says, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. You see, such experiences don't happen every day. This was to be a red letter day in the life of Isaiah. The earthly King Uzziah was dead, but he was to see that the King of all Kings was very much alive, alive. And his presence filled the temple. The Bible calls our body an earthly temple. This morning I wondered, is it your desire that his presence would fill your earthly temple? The prophet marks his ongoing experience by the use of the word then, of which there are three. The first one occurs like, the, occurs like this. It was when he was led to feel his unworthiness. And when was that? But it's important, friends, that we feel in the same condition if we want to receive the same revelation. You see, this is a revelation of God that each one can receive. You can receive it today, but only God can reveal himself to you through the Holy Spirit. There are people today, here, there and everywhere, and they have visions all the time, and they tell of these great visions, but they never come to nothing. That's not a revelation. That's just perhaps they've had too much cheese before they went to bed or they've imagined something, but it's certainly not a revelation from God. What was it that made Isaiah feel his unworthiness? Was it when he looked at the deceit of his own heart? Was it because the Bible tells us that the heart is deceitful above all things, desperately wicked, it says. Who can know it? Or was it when he looked at his sinful past? Or perhaps it was even when he looked at the best hour in his entire life and he still realized that he was a total failure. But none of these things are mentioned for the reason of Isaiah's humbling cry. And so when was it that he felt such an overwhelming sense of his own unworthiness? Why was it? It was then. Here's this word then. It was when he saw the Lord. He had saw the seraphims crying, holy, holy, holy. And the prophet was humbled by such reverence. Oh, we need the reverence of God once again, friends, in our time. This is what made the prophet cry out, woe is me, for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. You see, if you have not seen God with faith's eye, then you have never seen yourself. And you will never know how black you are till you've seen how bright he is. You see, we must tremble before thrice holy God, as Isaiah did. He felt his unworthiness, and then there came the second then. Oh, I tell you, the second then it is incredible and it's exciting. Are you ready to hear about it? Then tune in tomorrow morning. And I trust that God will bless you throughout this day, and God will reveal himself to you this day. God bless you. See you tomorrow morning, the same time.